Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of these guys right here. These are both examples of the Machine Era Fountain Kit. Uh, they are the same fundamental pen, uh, just in two different metals and with two different options pre-installed. But first off, I should give you the option of knowledge. I should let you know that uh, these guys were both provided to me directly by Machine Era. They reached out to me, said, Nick, we're launching a fountain pen in the Machine Era Classic format. I'm like, yes, yes. Um, and uh, but as always, I told them I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. It might be a gem. It might be junk. They still did send it along. Nonetheless, we have to assume these are the very best quality controlled pens ever. And I'm doing my best not to let any of that affect the nature or quality of my review. Next thing, let's do a bit of a size comparison here. What I'll go ahead and do is I'll put one of them open and I'll put one of them closed. That way you get a sense of both sides of things. First off, of, uh, as always, here is a pen I stole from a Hampton Inn, so you can get a sense of that. This is um, not a, a terribly uh, large pen, although actually, when fully ca uh, posted, it kind of is. Here it is against the Twisby Eco, which is my very favorite full-size fountain pen. Here it is against the Pacajar, uh right here. And uh, here it is against a Pilot G2. Uh, which, again, gives you a good sense of the size that we're looking at here. Here it is against the... <laughs> I'm just going to keep throwing pens at you here. This is the tactile turn bolt-action pen. Uh, here it is against a Fisher Space Pen, uh, which is another one of these bullet form factor pens. And then, of course, perhaps the most relevant comparison is the um, Machine Era Classic. And where is my Machine Era Tech? It is right here. Uh, this is another pen by the same company. This is the Tech... I just pulled this out of my briefcase here. So what we see here is that in terms of, uh, relative to the Machine Era Classic, actually, they are very, very similar. The only difference really in terms of size is going to be on the, 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 the diameter front, basically. If I uh, measure these guys out, we're coming in with a diameter here of, oh, let's say about 10.6 millimeters as opposed to here, we are coming at 10.1. Uh, not a huge difference, and perhaps they're not uniform throughout uh, size-wise, but they, this is just a little bit wider and just a little hair longer here. And yes, I'm using millimeters. Yeah, 119 versus... So come here. Don't fight me. 116. Not a huge difference there. So overall, these are very, very similar in size to the Machine Era Classic. Um, and that, I think, is an absolutely beautiful thing. And then finally, I want to talk for a second about what this actually is. This is called the Machine Era Fountain Kit. And what you get when you buy the kit, uh, you get you get a few things. You get, of course, the uh, the cap on the end of this guy. You get the body piece, and you get this uh, th this part here. And then you also get an ink converter, which is what you're seeing right here, as well as a rollerball tip, as well as a fountain nib tip. These are using a, a kit of uh, basically of items from Schmidt uh, Manufacturing, uh, which allow you to put in a uh, fountain tip uh, or a rollerball and use the exact same cartridge. Um, in this case. I'm actually using an international cartridge rather than using the converter, but the, the interface is identical here. And so when you buy one of these things, you will get the tip, you will get a cartridge, you'll get the converter, you'll get the roll, I'm sorry, you get a nib tip, you get a rollerball tip, and then you get the body of the pen. Uh, the, the only thing that I have that extra here basically is another pen uh, cap, middle part, and body. Everything else is a part of a single kit here. So um, th 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 that is what's going on. It is sold in right now either brass or stainless um and you also uh, you will pay 75 bucks for it whether you buy brass or stainless so that is the kit and let's go on ahead and talk about these pens and i'm going to talk about it as sort of one thing because i think they well it is kind of one thing um but we will uh, differentiate where we need the uh the the, the fountain pens versus the rollerballs etc so let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting set of pens. To start with, uh, one thing is that these are made in the USA. Um, they, they, these are made, as I recall, in Virginia. Um, the nib and uh, rollerball kits are made, I believe, by Schmidt, and I don't know exactly where those are being made, but nonetheless, the, the machining for the pens themselves is being done in the States here. Of course, quality is about effort, not geography, but I do always like cheering for my home team, so to speak, so that's a nice thing. Next thing, brass is a very nice choice right now. In the world of the 
Rona. Um, having a material that is a little bit hostile to bacteria and viruses is never a bad thing. Um, that doesn't mean it can't, of course, be transmitted that way, but, you know, it's never, it doesn't hurt a damn thing, right? Bioactive materials, as see, they're, they're so hot right now. Actually, they're less hot. That's kind of the point, right? Anyways, I digress. That's in the hot zone sense, not in the thermal conductivity sense. Anyways, moving along. Size on these guys is good. Um, like I said, they are not so different from the uh, Machine Era Classic. If you put them next to each other, it one seems a little bit beefier, but it really feels more like contour than anything. So in practice, they, they are basically the same size, and that's a really good size. Um, they, they, that's nice. And they also actually are a little lighter than the Classic. I'll, uh, oh, hold on, let me grab my scale here I had on my desk as I was writing the review, right? But if I put this guy here, and I drop this on, uh, we are looking at 1.29 ounces for the uh, brass, as opposed to, for the classic, 1.52 ounces here. So um, part of that is just that there's more material that's been milled out of the uh, fountain pen variety body versus the uh, the, the classic brass. That means it's probably going to be a little less durable um, than the, uh, the, the classic brass, but at the same time, uh, a little lighter. So can't really argue with that, right? So uh, size and weight are good to go. Next thing, um, both of these guys actually write quite well unposted. What I mean by that is that if even if you don't want to put the, uh, the, the cap, you can post the, the cap on this guy, which is something to highlight here. There we go. You can put that on there. But even if you don't want to do that, even if your goal is just to unscrew it real quick, jot something down, then screw it back on, um, it writes very well, at least for my relatively small hands, unposted, actually. Here, let me grab a, a piece of paper here. And uh, here is my fountain pen testing paper. You can probably recognize these scribbles from past reviews. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make that one word, because what are words, really? All right, so anyways, we can see here it writes very nicely unposted. In fact, uh, it writes very nicely, generally speaking. The fountain pen itself is good to go. Um, the nib itself is not the wettest thing out of the uh, out of the drawer, so to speak, but it is still a absolutely a fine nib with no problems whatsoever, and the rollerball is quite nice as well. Uh, the rollerball tip, which is right over here, works great. Um, and you can see here, this is actually a reasonably wet rollerball, and it takes very little effort to write with it. I am a big fan of that guy, uh, just in terms of uh, just writing, generally speaking. The rollerball does work great, and so that's good. Next thing, um, this guy is a very durable pen. Um, it is just a solid chunk of metal. In fact, it's three solid chunks of metal. There is no exposed plastic or anything like that, and although there is some plastic in both the converter mechanisms as well as in the rollerball feed, etc., um, uh, by and large, this is a chunk of solid metal, and so what this does is it just rides around in my pocket. I was like, Nick, there's no clip. Why do you carry it. Well, I just toss it in my pocket with my keys, with my, uh, well, what else lives in that pocket? My keys, my uh, headphones, my chapstick, um, all of that stuff lives in my in my uh, front left pocket. And so this just bounces around in there. And you can see that it picks up through the ink windows, which are completely open. It does pick up a little bit of the pocket dustification, but at the same time, oh no, what a tragedy, right? These guys carry well and are, are super durable even in there. So that's good. Um, next thing, these guys are nicely machined. These just feel very classy. Um, these are a pen that I take these guys out, like for instance, and this is happening more and more lately, you know, I go to a restaurant or something like that for takeout. They, uh, you know, hand me a receipt and they hand me this big pen that I just see 50,000 people have handled in the last 10 minutes. Like, no, 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 I got my own. I take this out. They're like, oh, that's nice looking. That's fancy. Where'd you get that? Oh, how much did you pay for that? And so it's like, you know, this catches people's eyes, generally speaking. It is a beautifully machined piece of metal. And when people actually handle it, uh, they, 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 they've been impressed by that too. So that's good. But actually, that's kind of surprising given given that it is only 75 bucks, right? Now, that's a good amount, you know, that's a, that's a lot more money than this, right? Um, but nonetheless, and that's assuming you don't steal it from the Hampton Inn, in which case it's free. Sorry about that. Um, but nonetheless, uh, this is not a super expensive pen, especially given the fact that you're getting two different refills and whatnot. I feel like for, for a made-in-the-USA bullet-style pen, this is coming in at a pretty very, a pretty very reasonable price. Ah, that's a pretty very clear way to put that. Um, so anyways, that's good. Next thing, this does have an ink window on there. So you can see, uh, depending, let's see here, I just stirred up the ink, but you can actually get a sense. You, you can see exactly where the ink level is at um, by looking through there. And if your pen is dry, you'll be able to see that just by holding it up to the sun, letting the sun shine through there. Here, let me grab a sun real quick. All right, here we go, sun. 
and we put it through there and you see, oh yeah, there we go. I need to refill the ink in this guy a little bit. So that's that. Next thing, um, what do I have here? Um, they are solid writers. Like I said, both of these things worked and write very well. And I like the roller ball especially a lot. It's just, it's a, a very nice wet roller ball. It, it feels great. It's easy to write with. There's very little, uh, no flow issues, things like that. So I'm definitely a fan of that. Then finally on the good side, I love the options here. Because what you get when you buy the kit is the ability not only to have a fountain pen, which is a good thing in and of itself. I like fountain pens. I think they're great. And having one in a pocketable kind of form factor like this, it's a little bit uh, less of a diva than something, you know, a, a big plasticky thing that you got to clip to your briefcase or something. If you've got a briefcase, uh, pretending any of us leaving the house. Anyways, I digress. Um... <laughs> So uh, the, the, the the Schmidt mediums here, uh, that's going to age well. Um, the, the Schmidt mediums are, uh, God, I hope that's going to age poorly. Uh, uh, back at the ranch, this is a medium nib from Schmidt. Um, and it comes for free with the kit. Well, you pay for it, but it comes as part of the kit here. It's a seven millimeter medium nib. Or you can also use the Schmidt cartridge rollerball system that comes with this. You get that option right there. Do I want to use a fountain pen nib or do I want to use a rollerball cartridge? Beyond that, you also have the option as to whether you want to use a cartridge converter like this. And this is a little device where when you spin this little guy here, it actually allows you to take ink out of a bottle directly and put it into this converter. And once it's in this converter, it'll be fed directly to the pen itself. Or you can buy ink cartridges. You can buy just a generic ink cartridge. I believe you can go short or long international standard, um, which is, is nice. Um, and so you can basically get any ink that you would like. Not only can you get inks and cartridges, and cartridges can be very helpful, by the way, if you are, for instance, flying. Um, because you don't necessarily want to have a, a fully inked fountain pen dealing with cabin pressure changes, but you can always throw a cartridge in your uh, suitcase there and then slap it in there when you get to wherever you're landing, right? Give you a plenty of time there. Um, or you can use ink from a bottle, I, you know, and any ink that you'd like, right? This is a set of the uh, Roshizuko ink, which is just absolutely great. That's what I've got in the, um, I believe that's what I've got in the roller ball at the moment. Uh, or maybe I've got blue black from... Uh, this looks like the blue-black, actually. I should throw the Orochizuko uh, in there. Anyways, I digress. You've got so many damn options here, which is just great. And the fact that you can have any ink color you'd like, as long as you can buy a bottle of ink, you've got it. You can have any nib you'd like. And by the way, you can swap out the nib with another version from, uh, from Schmidt. Uh, if you'd like down the road, but you've got so many damn options here, and I appreciate that a lot. So to me, all of this is the good, is that you've got options here, you've got a, a solid writer, you've got 75 bucks for a price, which is pretty reasonable. The ink window, nice machining, good durability and pocketability, writes well posted or unposted with a nice size and weight for pocket carry. Uh, brass is a really nice choice right now, and it's still made in the States, which is great. On the great side to me, though, um, the thing I like most about this idea is the environmental friendliness of it, right? Is like the problem with a pen like this. This is the Machine Era Classic. One of my very, very favorite pens, but the problem with it is it's using a cartridge, right? It's using a Pilot G2 cartridge. And when this thing runs out of ink, uh, and even yeah, that'll be a little while, what am I doing? I'm throwing away this entire chunk. So this is non-recyclable plastic, a chunk of metal, etc. Some the, the real stuff went into making this here. When in reality, the only thing I need to be swapping out here, only, the only thing I need to be doing is getting more ink into the system. And the nice part about a system like this, where you're using a cartridge converter, is that all you need to do is add more ink, right? And then it's done. And even if you want to use the cartridges, you can refill the cartridge. This just means this pen is more environmentally friendly than any of the other refill-based pens that are out there. Um, of course, it's at the same level as a fountain pen, right? But that's the nature of the beast. Um, but anyways, this is a very environmentally friendly pen. You're not swapping out anything but the ink. And it, this is a nice way, too, to get a rollerball cartridge, which is, uh, I'm sorry, a rollerball-style pen without re relying on expensive cartridges because you can buy for the price of you know a 10 pack of cartridges you can buy a really high-end ink and get plenty of you know th there is a lot of joy there so to me at least what's really great about this guy is the environmental friendliness that comes with being able to use your own ink and not throw anything away when you have to refill it i i like that a lot and i think that does mean something especially now more than ever so um to me that's what's great on the bad side i'd like to see some more metal options maybe titanium maybe copper that'd be cool in the future not a big deal I'd also like to see a pocket clip option.
version, although they, and they did the mock-up version of the uh, Machine Era Classic, and honestly, I stuck around with the Classic, but I know for a lot of people, lack of a clip can be a deal-breaker. I think you should try the pocket-based carry, because I didn't think that was smart until I did, and it was like, oh my god, that's great! But still, um, that's definitely a thing. Next thing, um, this does have a tendency for the caps to get a little bit loosened. It's not the end of the world, I've not had it come outright out, but I've definitely noticed at times I'll take it out of my pocket, and the cap is slightly loosened. So I make a point of every so often when I reach in my pocket, I locate my pen and just twist it closed there. But having like a little O-ring or something in there might make that a little easier make it stick on there. Um, next thing, posting the cap is not necessarily the most straightforward thing ever. There's, you get better at it, but it definitely, it, it, especially at first, it takes some jiggling, because there is a correct angle that everything needs to be at in order for the threads to mate, in order for everything to go on like that. It's not the end of the world. I, like I said, I've gotten much better at it over time, but it's definitely a process, and I, you know, a little bit of on-ramp, so to speak, for the cap wouldn't be a bad idea here. Next thing, um, the ink window here has got a little bit of a sharp edge. On both of these guys, this little corner right at the edge of the ink window, that could use a little bit more chamfering, could use a little bit more polishing. Not the end of the world, but it's definitely one of the few areas on this that is a little bit on the sharper side, and um, along with the threads here. But it's definitely, that's something to keep in mind. Next thing, with a fountain pen, there is always the chance of a little bit of ink shakeout. What I mean by that is, maybe you can look at the bottom there, you see little dabs of ink down there. Um, this is not ideal, but in practice, it doesn't matter all that much. What you can do is you just every so often you take a good old-fashioned cotton swab and you shove it down the bottom of there and you pull out whatever ink is uh, you know gotten itself swabbed up into there and then there you go problem solved case closed and similarly you might end up with little dots of ink on the tip of the fountain pen but the thing is it still works and because the pen is sealed nicely there's not going to be a problem there and then finally, on the bad side, um, there is only one option for nibs a as it sells. I mean, and given, they're already giving you the option of the rollerball, but right now, you order it with a mid uh, medium Schmidt nib. That said, I am finding other Schmidt nibs um, that come with the entire plastic area here um, online for about 20 bucks, and you can there, you can get broad, you can get... Uh, I forget the other sizes, but uh, you can get other sizes of these guys. I don't see any stub nibs, and I am personally a big fan of a stub nib. This is a... Uh this right here is the Shown Design Pocket 6, and this has a stub nib where it has a, an asymmetrical uh, thing, so you end up with a line that goes like, think, 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 where there's a little bit of uh, width variation there. But anyways, um, I'm a big fan of a stub nib. That's not an option here, but anything that Schmidt makes, you can probably swap into here. So um, there's that, and to me, all of that is the bad, is that you only have one nib option. You can't specify a fine or anything like that. There are sharp edges around the ink window. There's always a little chance of ink shakeout with the fountain version. <clears throat> Posting the cap does require a little bit of jiggling. There's no pocket clip, and I'd like to see a little more metal. On the ugly front, there's one thing that isn't actually all that ugly, Ugly, but I do want to report it for transparency, and that is the case. That is the fact that the very first rollerball uh, cartridge that I, well, not cartridge, I'm sorry, the rollerball head that I had for this guy ended up leaking. Um, I just opened it up, and I would notice on a number of occasions that there was a little globule of ink around the front of it there. Um, this is something that happened with both the converter and with the cartridge, and I'm using the same ink, and I'm using the same cartridge in this new one. What they did is they sent me a new rollerball head, and it's been perfect ever since. So I assume I just got a lemon there. Um, but they, and they, you know, replaced it. They were, and given my experience is probably atypical as a gear reviewer, but still, um, once that was fixed, there's been no problem. But I, I do really like the rollerball pen, and I actually think I prefer it to the fountain pen. It's just a little bit more uh, daily practical these days. But for transparency, I did need to let you know that that first version did have that issue. But once it swapped out, everything's beautiful. So um, that's an ugly situation, but hopefully it's also a rare one. So uh, I do keep that in mind. So final conclusion, this is a very cool revision to what is actually my favorite pen ever. I would, I would probably argue that at this point in time, this may be the pen that I recommend more than anything else at this point, given the price, given the size, given everything. This is the pen, and it's definitely the pen that's gotten the most pocket time in the last year or two. Um, this is a, a really, really excellent everyday carry pen. The Machine Era original, the classic, or whatever they call it. This is really great. And what they've done here is they've just taken that design, that idea, and now they've made it so that you can use a rollerball. Wow, that was loud. Sorry about that. Um, but they've made it so you can use a rollerball. They've made it so you can use a fountain pen nib. 
It's a beautiful freaking thing. And the pen was good this start with American manufacturer, which, uh, you know, is a nice thing for a lot of folks these days. Um, it's got brass, uh, the option for brass. It's got good size and weight, a durable, pocketable form factor, good machining, a decent price, nice writing, lots of options, and the increased resp environmental responsibility of just replacing the ink rather than throwing away a bunch of plastic and metal. Of course, it's not perfect with limited metal selection, no clip, a missing runway for posting the cap, making that process a little fiddlier than I'd like. Um, a couple of little sharp edges and some limitations on nib choices. But the thing is, those are subtle enough tweaks and easy enough for them to do down the road. Honestly, this is now, I like the Machine Era a, a, a great deal. I, I'm sorry, the Machine Era Classic. This is still probably going to be my favorite. And it's going to be just because it's cheaper, the one I'm going to recommend to most people. But in terms of budget-friendly uh, fountain pocket pens or pocket fountain pens, this is probably going to be my choice. It's going to beat out the Caveco Lilliput, which is one that I carried for a long time for all, but I think the most size-conscious buyers. The Lilliput had the advantage of being a little bit smaller, but this takes a larger cartridge. It takes a full converter. This has a lot of advantages relative to the Lilliput, and so I'm probably going to send people here instead of there, generally speaking. And until you get up to fancier pieces, like the Shone Design Pocket 6 here, which I have fallen absolutely head over heels with, but is also more more than twice, uh, almost three times the price, I think. This is a beautiful pen, and it's a piece of machining art that also happens to be a pocket fountain pen, but um, it's so much more expensive that it's kind of in a different world, right? So I really, really recommend this pen, and especially being able to use this rollerball version and being able to use an ink of my choice with it that is absolutely great. Um, that is going to make this rollerball kind of the daily choice for me. In fact, I think that after this review, I'm going to swap the rollerball head into the brass body and just start carrying that for a little while. Uh, this guy will probably find his way back into my pocket at some point in time, but for the moment, I'm really liking that combination. So to me, uh, I mean, in short, this is a new version of my very favorite pen right? And I love it just as much as I love the original. Um, it is different. It offers some new choices, but it is absolutely a gem. This is a pen I'm going to be recommending a great deal, and uh, yeah, it's absolutely great. So if you want a pocket-friendly fountain pen, and you, you, you want to keep on rolling rollerball style with your own ink on tap, either one of those, the Machine Era Fountain Kit is going to be the perfect bit of kit for you. So anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.